Many would argue that France was the reason the Americans won the Revolutionary War, and they may not be wrong. They swooped in when the Patriots needed them the most and saved the day. Despite their aid, Benjamin Franklin was the true hero. During the time of the Revolutionary War, Benjamin Franklin was able to convince France to make an alliance with America. The help from France in the war was an essential component to breaking the barrier of European colonization, therefore making Franklin's contributions crucial. The war started in 1775 after the Patriots decided that they wanted independence from Britain. However, Britain had the strongest and most effective navy at the time, leaving America's Continental Army outnumbered, outgunned, and out of money. As the British were approaching New York City with 300 ships and 30,000 soldiers, uh, George Washington has no ships and 20,000 soldiers on a good day, of which he can probably count on 5,000 of his 20,000 that will actually stand and fight. Militarily, this is going to be a tough war for the Americans to win. In a letter from a British officer to his wife after yet another victory against the Americans, he stated, We have had a glorious day against the rebels. While the Hessians and the rest of the army amused them in front and on the left, the grenadiers and light infantry attacked them in the rear. By this masterly maneuver, the rebels were immediately thrown into general confusion and behaved most shamefully. The numbers killed, wounded, and taken you will see in the Gazette. Some of the Hessians told me they buried between 400 and 500 in one pit. The Continental Army was in desperate need of assistance, so the Continental Congress made the Committee of Secret Correspondence, also known as the Committee of Foreign Affairs. It was made to communicate with neighboring European countries in search of support in the war. In 1776, they appointed Benjamin Franklin as an agent to serve in France. There is no other world power that the United States to be, or the whole United Colonies at the point that point, could have approached and said, would you be willing to help us? In October of 1776, 70-year-old Benjamin Franklin set out to join his fellow commissioners, Silas Dean and Arthur Lee, in Paris, France. Franklin was known for his groundbreaking discoveries and inventions, which made him well-loved and welcomed in France. Uh, he was till, the most famous American of his time in Europe, by far. Scientist, yeah, inventor. We had conquered Frencher. electricity and done the lightning rod, which made him world famous, because that was the biggest discovery in that century all over the world. In Franklin's first attempt at getting more help, he had a meeting with the French foreign minister, Charles Gravier Comité de Virginais, in December of 1776. He asked not just for more funds and equipment, but also an alliance that would allow the two to fight together against Britain. However, France only agreed to continue sending funds when necessary until the Americans could prove to them that they could win. The French looked at the Americans and went, they're good at shooting squirrels out of trees, and they may have been good at fighting Native Americans, but they're not going to be any good at fighting a real army of trained soldiers from the British. And whatever money and guns we give them may be wasted. The French also believed that the colonists were not completely committed to the war and thought that they would turn against them if they helped out. This caused lots of hesitation when considering making an alliance. So this was a big issue for them. They didn't trust us. We, on the other hand, looked at them and said, you know what, we really need your help. It would be great if you helped us. It's essential. We have to have your help. After you help us, we can't promise that we're going to be your friends anymore. So that's the relationship between these two groups of people. It's complicated. Because of this, Benjamin Franklin needed to use many different strategies to convince the French to back America, including persuasive arguments, building strong relationships, and applying his unique moral resolve to get the job done. He works this relationship with the French in an extremely skillful way. There was also something about Franklin, for good and for bad, that sort of strivingly upward mobile, yuppie right. entrepreneur, a man of the information age back then. Franklin argued persuasively, using the claim that without help, America might be forced to compromise with Britain, and this was France's chance to get revenge on Britain after losing the Seven Years' War. 
He also spent great time and effort building strong relationships with many influential figures in French government and society, which was largely misunderstood by other ambassadors at that time, including John Adams. While Adams was in France, he wrote in his diary on April 21st, 1778, about having yet another dinner with Benjamin Franklin and many other prominent people. These incessant dinners and dissipations were not the objects of my mission to France. Adams generally did not agree with his approach, but Franklin knew that building relationships was an important step in attaining the alliance. Franklin has learns enough French that he can communicate with the French, and then he learns to back off on how good his French is, so they think that he doesn't always understand them. He's very clever. Franklin's strong moral compass was another important tool in his negotiations with France. As described in his autobiography, the fourth of 13 virtues he chose to live by was resolution. Resolve to perform what you ought and perform without fail what you resolve. With this in mind, Franklin was persistent in his arguments and would not accept no for an answer. Meanwhile, back in America, the Patriots were holding on to a small glimmer of hope that someone would come to their aid, not just with money, but with men. They were extremely tense while awaiting news from Franklin about whether he had been successful, for they knew that they would lose against Britain without additional military support. Going into the Battle of Saratoga in 1777, the Patriots' odds were still not in their favor. However, they managed to corner the British, which resulted in the American win at Saratoga. This victory was a major turning point in the war and that impressed the French and prompted them to be our ally. He was able to go to the French after that battle and say, see, we know what we're doing. We can fight battles, we can fight wars against the British, but we need money, we need guns, we need the Navy. On February 6th of 1778, the Treaty of Alliance and the Treaty of Amity and Commerce were signed, later to be approved in March by Louis XVI, King of France. These alliances allowed the French soldiers to go to America and help them battle the British, which is exactly what they did. France fought with the Patriots in the Battle of Yorktown, and together they beat Britain. In a letter to Samuel Cooper, Franklin expressed the pride toward his contributions to the American cause. I am, as you supposed, treated with great civility and respect by all orders of people, but it gives me still greater satisfaction to find that our being here is of some use to our country. So his negotiation skills were, he was always about the Americans. As much as he loved the French and wanted to cultivate it, they weren't his people. So he's, he's a remarkable person and one of the most significant people of early American history. John Harrower, an indentured servant, recorded in his diary about the day he found out America was free from Britain. He writes, there was great rejoicings in town on account of the Congress having declared the 13 United Colonies of North America independent of the Crown of Great Britain. Even after the treaty was signed and America was victorious, Franklin still endeavored to protect and strengthen the partnership with France. In May of 1784, a letter from Franklin to Reverend Samuel Mather was written about the relations between America and France. It states, a breach between us and France would infallibly bring the English again upon our backs, and yet we have some wild heads among our countrymen who are endeavoring to weaken that connection. Let us preserve our reputation by performing our engagements, our credit by fulfilling our contracts, and our friends by gratitude and kindness, for we know not how soon we may again have occasion for all of them. Without France, there is no way America would have won the war. Britain had the largest and most powerful navy at the time. They had plenty of soldiers, weapons, and money compared to the colonists who didn't have much of anything. However, with assistance from the French, America was strong enough to defeat Britain. Without the French, the American Revolution doesn't happen. It's a failure. French soldiers are buried in the United States who died to help free our country from the British. Ultimately, who knows where we would be without Benjamin Franklin? not just because of his inventions and discoveries, but also his convincing consultations with France that largely contributed to the freedom of America from Britain's tyranny. He's a guy who plays the fool, but he's nobody's fool. And the peace treaty he signs with the French is the key.